קקדוש, בוקר אור, מסכת בבטרה, דף יומי, דף קמ"א עמוד א', העומד עם ילדה אשתי זכר. A person comes and he says that what happens if his wife is going to have a meal? So he should take 200. And if it's going to be a nekeva, it's going to be, uh, sorry, 100. And then if it's a nekeva, a female, it's going to be 200. This is a very interesting question. Are you listening, Ronan? Are you going to tell me that a girl is better than a boy? A boy. Because he said, if my wife comes and she's going to have a boy, she should take 100 zoos. But if she has a girl, 200 zoos. Are you going to tell me a girl is better than a boy? Yeah? והאמר רבי יוחנן, משום משום בן יוחאי, סז רבי יוחנן נאמן ובשמו בר יוחאי, כל שאינו מניח בן יהושע הקדוש ברוך הוא, מלא עליו עברה. אם אדם לא יש לו בן, אתה יורש אותו, הקדוש ברוך הוא מלא כעס על הם. שנאמר בזה זה פסוק, ועברתם את נחלתו לביתו, והן העברה אל העברה, שנאמר יום עברה היום ההוא. מה זה אומר? You're going to pass over the Nakhala to his daughter, and there's no Evra, Ela Avera. Right? There's no Havara, because it says Vavartem. Vavartem is to pass over. But he says there's no Avara, Ela Evra. Evra is Kaas. Shneemar, as it says, Yom Evra, Yom Ahu. That day is going to be full of Kaas. So it's Mashma that he's going to be upset. Now, you're going to say that Kilu, that it's, it's you know, it's, is it the choice or not the choice? He says here, Mashenu Meniach Ben, Hu Avera Ben Biyad Adam Ahu. שלא קיים, קיים פרייה ורבייה עד שיעמיד בן. מינינג, זה לא ניצר פרייה ורבייה. How can you not do פרייה ורבייה? That's why השם is angry with you. You have to be מקיים ניצר פרייה ורבייה. Right? So he says, answers the Gemara, לעניין ירושה, בן עדיף ל... You're right. To do with ירושה, you always prefer a boy than a girl. At 100%. Why? It's the person that continues the name of the family. It's the person that continues... So, you want a boy. But to do with harvacha, which is parnasa berevach, bito adifale. The girl is better than the boy, right? He says, because since the bat, right, um, does not go looking after a mezonot and everything like a ben, so therefore to do with harvacha, the daughter, right, is going to be like this. A person right now has money. Who does he prefer inherit him? The son or the daughter? The son. Why? The son will always continue the name, continue the family. The daughter, she gets married, everything goes to the husband. And then it goes to his family, and that's the way it goes. So he always prefers the son and the daughter to do with Yerusha. But to do with Parnasa, a person would always prefer that his daughter has more Parnasa than the son, because the son could always ask for money on the doors. The daughter doesn't do that. So for Money on the doors. He could knock on doors for cash. He could, he could be a tzedakah. He could, be, he could go around collecting tzedakah. The daughter doesn't do that. So he always prefers that his daughter has more money than his son. Not in Yerusha. You're right. Yerusha is always about the boy. But to do with the money, it's a girl. That's the first answer of the Gimara. Shmuel Amar. Shmuel comes and he says, Haha. <coughs> Here the Mishnah is talking about that the girl is better. It's the first child. Like Rav Chasta says. Tamar Rav Chasta says Rav Chasta. Bat techila siman yafe labanim. Remember this Gimara. How do you remember this Gimara? The first girl is actually a good sign. Right? He, he lives it. So yeah, he lived it. Yeah? Not only she appears, she takes care of them. She's the one... How do you remember that this is on this gema, on this gema, on this daf? So, bat is mesechet, batra, bat, batra, kama. What is kama? Kuf, mem, aleph. What daf are we on? No, kuf, mem, aleph. So if you ever want to remember how, where is it written that the daughter that comes first is actually a good siman, she's going to grow them up, she's going to take care of them. She's a, it's a good sign. It's a good siman. How do you remember that? Bat kama. Masech babatra kuf mem alef. Bat kama. Siman yafe labani. I just gave you an incredible. And kama is the daf. What page? What page? Kuf mem alef. So it's batra kuf mem alef. בת כמה סימן יפה לבנים, לא צריך לבחור סתם. 
בת תחילה, which is basically בת כמה, בת פרסט, right? is going to be סימן יפה לבנים, אוקיי? So he says, איקא דאמני, right? Some people say, why? דמרבי הלכה, because she grows up to other boys. I mean, usually when it's a boy, the boy is not going to start coming and taking care of the other boys. Uh, he's a boy, he's running around, uh, you have to take care of him and the other boys. She's a mini mom, exactly. And some people say, And some people say, there's no Aynara. No personal things here. Yeah? He says, no Aynara. So therefore it says, we don't want Aynara. Sama Rav Chasta says Rav Chasta, Uldidi benatan adifa li bibnai. Do you know for me it's better the girls than the boys? Yeah, Rav Chasta was adding. He says, Bat tzchila siman yafe lebenim. Yeah, banot are even better than boys. Right, there's a whole question, why is he saying that? He says because, you know, he was he talking about only the first child, not the first child? Fine. He says, right, some people are actually a mefarshim, this is Tosafot. Are you listening? Tosafot actually explained the reason why he said that it was better for him, the girls and the boys, was because they got married to big Tamidei Chachamim. So because they got married to big Tamidei Chachamim, he preferred the girls and the boys. Yeah? Yeah, because they had... Uh, by the way, you know who says that? I think it's the Ben Yishchai and the Peliwet and everything that they went and they said, don't be upset if a person had girls because he had much more nachat from the girls and the boys. Because the girls went, they got married to Tamidei Chachamim, they continued this, and sometimes... Uh, Huh? Also, if they become, but uh, boys' chinuch is much more difficult than the girls. Yeah, we by Teman, if you want, you could answer, how many was it? Rabbi Yuda, he, it's Rabbi Yuda. Why? Hi, Rabbi Yuda. So, what, what Rabbi Yuda? Ilim a Rabbi Yuda dvakol. If you're going to tell me it's Rabbi Yuda dvakol. What is it dvakol? So, tell him we learned to the Brayta. Vashem berach et Avraham bakol. HaKadosh Baruch Hu blessed Avraham Avinu with everything. Yeah, I think it's this week's parasha, no? This week or next week? Yeah, it's either this week or next week. Right? V'ashem berachet Avram bakol. The B'mir Omer, the B'mir says, what does that mean? Shelo haya lo bat. Shelo haya lo bat. He didn't have a daughter. That was bakol. He blessed her with everything that he didn't have a daughter. Now, how do you understand that? What does that mean? So here he says, the reason why is because he wouldn't have had a person He wouldn't have had a good guy to give her over to. So that's why it was the biggest blessing that Kilu that he didn't have a daughter. Because who's he gonna who's he gonna give her over to? He didn't want them to go to Abu Dazara and all that. So therefore it was a blessing, right? That's that they call that by the way, a blessing in disguise. It was a blessing that he didn't have a daughter. That's the first shita, Rabbi Mir. Rabbi Yuda Omer, Haitalobat. He didn't have a daughter. Avram Avinu. Along, along with yeah, no, not, not the same time, but he had a daughter. What was her name? Ubakol Shema. Her name was Bakol. V'ashem barachat Avram, bakol, bakol is her name. That's a shita of Rabbi Yudah. Eimar d'shama le'el Rabbi Yudah, t'barta nami lo chaser al-achmana le'el Avraham. So it comes out that according to Rabbi Yudah, he also wasn't lacking a daughter. Tadifa mi ben me'el, okay, fine. So he wasn't lacking a daughter, but who said that it's better than a boy? Yeah, elaha Rabbi Yudah, another Rabbi Yudah. Rabbi Yudah says to Tanya, mitzvah l'azun et obanot v'kav v'chol v'vanim. There's a mitzvah to give parnasah to the girls and kav v'chomer to the boys. They ask about Torah, but they're learning Torah. These are the words of Rabbi, of Rabbi Min. Rabbi Yudah says, no, it's a mitzvah to, to give the parnasah to the boys and kava to, to the girls, the lo litzelan, in order to disgrace them. Because basically, there's a whole bunch of, uh, there's much more busha to a woman than a man. So since there's more busha, so therefore you have to come and you have to, you know, you have to make sure that she's going to have, right, adequate uh, parnasah and everything. If she doesn't have a problem, So now it says, but we learned, Do you know that there is a writer that says that when a woman is pregnant, and if she's going to give birth, she's going to have so-and-so, let's say she has twins. So the Zahad is going to take six dinari Zahav, right, which is Manava Chetzi, and the Nekeva is going to take two dinarim, right, which is Chetzi Mana. So he says, one second, what, what are we talking about then? Why all of a sudden now is that the boy is taking six dinarim and the girl is only taking two? We're talking about an, a, a father that he changed everything. He was mefaresh matanato in a place of tilmin. And therefore he went and he said, what happens if you first explain about a boy and then afterwards a girl? And then he said, 
So he says, for example, Zachar Tchila Matayim, Nekeva Acharav Lo Klum. Nekeva Tchila Maneh, Zachar Acharia Maneh. What happened? Imagine the guy comes and he says, you know what, if the wife is going to have a boy, right, you should take 200 Zeus. If it's a girl, nothing. And then, you know, especially, you know, some Moroccans, uh, girl, like, not, you know, like a, or then he says, a girl at the beginning, Amene, and a boy afterwards, Amene. Now, what happens is, Yalda Zacharu Nekeva. She had a boy and a girl. She had twins. So she actually was with the whole of both of them. One shot. Yeah? Two for one. So he says, We don't know which one came first. Was it the boy or the girl? Meaning, for sure he had a boy and a girl. But who was born first? The boy or the girl? They don't know. So the Zachar is anyone anyway going to take a mane. Mimanashak is going to take a mane. Whether he was first or last. But the Idach mane, the other half, have a mono mutal It's a doubt what happened. So therefore, Chulkim, you divide it. And therefore, the, the boy is going to take one and a half, and the girl is only going to take a half. The reason why is because if you remember, but at the beginning, he said that if the if the girl comes after the boy, she gets nothing. Then he said, if the girl comes first, right? So then it's money. So because of that, it's a doubt. Who came first? That other hundred is a doubt. Was it the boy first or the girl? So half, you split it. So if the boy takes one and a half, right? One hundred, and the other half. And the girl takes half. So it's one and a half and a half. It's like, it's like 150 and 50, right? To get to the 200. So says the Gemara, we learn to the He only gets a mane. So what's the case? Amaravina bin Vasereni. He says, What does that mean? We're not talking about like it's a present that he's giving. It's talking about somebody that lets him know about it. So for example, somebody that lets me know that I'm going to have a boy, I'm going to give you 100 zoos. That's what happened. On Vasereni. Somebody in Vaser, Besora Tova. Okay? Kuf Memalef Mubet. 141B. The Tanya, as we learned to the Brighton, Vasareni Bema Bame Niftar Rahma Shilishti. If somebody's going to tell him what does the, 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 his wife have first, Im Zachar, he told Mane, if it's a boy, he's going to take Mane, if it's a girl, he's going to take Mane. Im Nekeva Mane, Yalda Nekeva Nutel Mane. Ve Im Zachar Mane, Vim Nekeva Mane, Yalda Zachar Nutel Mane, Yalda Nekeva Nutel Mane. Yalda Zachar Nekeva Mane, if it's both, and Noel Mane, he's only going to have a Mane. He says, why? Because the father did not say anything about, he was only talking about one Mane. Mane is like a hundred dollars. There's Mane and Mataim, right? Mataim zuz and Mane. Al Mana is called Al Shem Mane. Al Shem Mana. Mana is because she only gets one hundred zuz. She doesn't get two hundred. Meaning, when a when a virgin gets married, it's two hundred zuz for the ketuba. When Al Mana gets married, it's only one hundred zuz. That's Al Shem Mana. Al Shem Mane. One Mane. It's one. It's not two. When uh, like uh, the first time that she's married, so it's also a Mane. Also gets a hundred. There's a whole question to do with what about if it's beulat atzmo? If it's beulat atzmo, that means he was the one that had relations with her before marriage. Oh. So therefore, he would still have to give her two hundred because he was the one that that did that to her. If it's going to be somebody else and they know about it, then it could be a hundred. Nowadays, though, many times they're going to be mochel and they'll still give them two hundred, and then yes, hundred percent. No, because basically that's her value. Is is she used or not? Understand? No. He says the Gemara v'had zacharu nekeva lo amad, but he didn't say what happens if he has a boy and a girl. Because here he had twins. The Amar Nami that also im zacharu nekeva nami yitol manef. It's going to be a boy and a girl. Also, she could only take a manef. Elamutimai was coming to exclude a nephil. A nephil is a stillborn. That a stillborn will not take anything then. Okay, because obviously he dies at birth. Okay, fine story. Aud amal leledvitu. Somebody comes and he tells his wife, His properties are going to be given to the one that you're pregnant with. Amaravuna Ravuna says, He's being mezakeh to the fetus. He didn't do anything. So eight way, so they're going to ask the following question. Yeah, eight way, Rav Nachman Ravuna, how many yalda ishti zachar yitol mane, yalda zachar notel mane, amalem ishtatenu yudea mishana. He says, one second, one second. The question is, Rav Nachman asks Rav Huna from Mishnah. The Mishnah says, if somebody is going to say that the, the wife is going to have a boy, that she should take a mane, so you should take a mane. Now, one second, but that, that's to an ubar. What's going on? So he says, I don't know who taught the Mishnah. So it says, why don't you just say it's a mimir? Rav Mimir says, Adam mimir, a person could acquire something even though it didn't come into this world. So therefore, it should be good. So he says, our Mishnah is a mimir, and that's it. Well, what's so difficult? So he says, no. 
אין מורד ושמה ללא רבי מאיר, לדבר שיש לו בעולם, לדבר שאינו בעולם, נשמה לה? רבי מאיר says, you could acquire something that did not come into the world, but you're in the world. He never said that to something which is not in the world. So for example, I'm going to come and I'm going to say, right, Ronan is going to say, the extra, you know, the other million that he's going to make is going to come to me. Even though right now he didn't make that extra million, it's the verse shelo ba'lo olam, he didn't come into the world, but I'm here. So since I'm here, he could acquire that extra million to me. Yeah, you guys are witnesses, yeah? Yeah, yeah, the, no, he's acquiring it to me, he's giving it to me. So he acquired it to me, why? Because I'm in the world. So if, even though the million is not in the world, but he could acquire it because I'm in the world. But he said, nobody ever said in Shittat Arbinid that you could acquire to something which is not in the world, which is the fetus that is not in the world, something which is not in the world. You understand? Meaning that you could acquire something which is not here to somebody that is here. So but not, not somebody who's not in the world, whoever said that he could acquire anything. That's the question. So it says, okay, so why don't we say to Yoseh? The Amar Ubar Kona, according to Shittat Arbinid, we learned in the Mishnah, Ubar is Kona. But Ubar Posel, not only that, an Ubar, which is going to be in a in the in the a Ben Kohen, right? In the in the mother's womb, okay, is going to cause that the Ovre Yirusha are going to be a Surim and Truma. Because the fact that he's in the in the in the in the woman in a regular Israelite is not a Kohen until he's born. And therefore, since he's going to be your Resh who Bavadin, a Surim him mechamato betruma, they're not allowed to eat Truma until Venu Machim. Right? Everyone understood what happened. One more time. A Bat Yisrael gets married to a Kohen. Right? Bat Yisrael. Yeah? Gets married to a Kohen. Right? Now he dies. The Kohen dies. Huh? Yeah? Allah Shalom. Now she's pregnant. She's pregnant from the Kohen. Okay? The Ubar is to sell everybody else to... Because until he's born, he's not a Kohen. He's in the in the womb of a Israelite. So therefore, uh, well, so when he's born, he's a Kohen. But until he's born, he's posel. So for example, let's say the, the, the Kohen, he had slaves, slaves of Kohen, the Yitruma. The second that the Kohen dies, and now the one that's inheriting is the fetus, until the fetus is not born, the, the, the slaves are not allowed to eat Truma. He's posel. Yes, the slaves of a Kohen. <laughs> The whole miknat kesef, right? Right, they're going together. So he says, He also does not have the power to give to eat to somebody else. So that means this Israelite was permitted to eat Kohen because she was permitted to eat Truma because she was married to Kohen. So she cannot eat Truma either. Not the heaven, not her. No, yeah, because yeah, the eno ma'achil he can't give a treaty. Though these words are Rabbi so answers the Gemara. Shana Yerusha ba me'elia. Here it's different Yerusha, but it comes on its own. So says the Gemara. Why don't we just say Rabbi Yochanan Rokai? Te'amar lo shana Yerusha lo shomer tana. There's no one between Yerusha and Matana. The Tana we learned in the Mishnah. Rabbi Yochanan Rokai Omer. Ima man man nishe no shera oy liyor shod varav kaimim. If he's saying it on somebody that's fitting to inherit him, it's going to be okay. You remember the famous Rabbi Yochanan Rokai. The famous of Yochanan and Rukha was that you could give an inheritance to somebody and as long as they're fitting to inherit, you could change everything because you're giving it to somebody that's fitting to inherit. And you could change. You could give one, one boy to another boy. You could, you know, instead like a girl to the girl. Yeah, you could give you, as long as they're fitting to inherit on the same level, you could do whatever you want. Oh yeah, one second. That, that. So, Eymar, the Shabbat of Yochanan and Rukha, the Vashish Shema Olam, here's the Vashish Shema Olam, Yemar. So says the okay, fine. Maybe so Yochram Ruka. And he holds like Rabbi Yosef. Remember, Rabbi Yosef says that you could be Mizaket to Anubar and the, to a fetus. And since you could be Mizaket to Anubar, right? That's his shita. Okay. So therefore, that's it. So he says, Miyam are the Savale. He says, whoever said that that's what he holds, that Rabbi Yochram Ruka holds like Rabbi Yosef. So says the Gemara. Maybe we're talking about also that he just said somebody that tells me that the wife is going to give birth, right? Vasareni. So says the Gemara. Yehachi. If so, if Tani Seifa, let's see the Seifa. Vim En Sham Yoresh Elahu Yoresh Atakol. If he's only going to be there, he's going to be Yoresh everything. Even Vasareni. If it's going to be Vasareni, Yoresh Me Avite. What are you going to say? Vleima Le. What do we just say? Bishialda. Right when she gave birth. Yeah, if so, the Tani Seifa, Vimamar, Kolma Shetelad, Yishti, Yitol, right? That is the Yitol, 
כל שתלד, כל של ילדה מבא אליה. Anything which is going to be your ילדה, that she would give birth. Right? That's what it should be. Okay? So he just says, When she's going to give birth, and then the Gemana is going to continue, right, tomorrow.